Yo, yo, welcome back to another episode of the Feel Free Podcast, the only podcast that'll tell you to chase your dreams and call you out on all your bullshit, myself included. Uh, it's been a while since I did a little solo episode, to be honest. I'm really just checking out the new camera. Uh, I got another camera over here, too. Um, also, just wanted to give a couple updates on, you know, everything that's been going on. Trying to make some moves to make the podcast a little more than just a hobby. Uh, give a few updates on what's transpired over the last couple months. I guess you could view this as a vlog, um, but fuck it, we're running it as a podcast anyway. Um, I had somebody comment on one of my posts on Instagram asking how I maneuvered quitting smoking tobacco, um, which is an interesting topic because I've been on and off with the, the habit over the last year. Um, for better or worse, mostly worse, we'll say, we'll say it's for worse for sure. Um, I've definitely noticed that the months that I'm not, uh, smoking, I'm, I'm doing a lot better in terms of wellness, overall wellness, pretty much every facet of wellness is a lot better off without it. Um, <clears throat> Unfortunately, I just unlocked another one of my my vices. Um, I let it creep up on me, and I, uh, you know, I don't really want to be ashamed of it. Uh, you know, everybody makes mistakes. It's a failure, which has actually spurred me into working on another book other than The Hierarchy of Habits. I might have mentioned this in an episode over the last couple months that I'm, I am starting another book uh, that's going to be called F or Working Title. But I'd like to touch on fear, failure, forgiveness, and freedom. And, you know, what better way to kickstart that than with a really bad smoking habit? So, yeah, so the, the question was how I maneuvered quitting. Right now I'm 50 days without smoking. Um, over the last 13, 14 months now, 14 months since I started casually smoking tobacco out of these 14 15 months um i'd honestly say that 67 percent of the time i have not been using tobacco so the other 33 percent of the time i was um i saw a, a drastic decrease in my creativity um the things i ate changed my diet exercising habits um a lot of woe is me crap hiding under a rock as usual. But, you know, that's a common theme of me during my heavy addiction was um, hiding under my rock and stuff. So uh, it was a very stressful year, I'd like to say. But before I get into the stressful year part, I'd like to talk about the how I outmaneuvered this. I'm trying to answer that question without going on a, a few tangents, but uh, you can't replace one vice with with nothing, I'd like to say. Um, and it is very difficult, in my opinion, to replace your vices with healthy ones if you don't have a good routine set. So... Um, which was the inspiration behind the hierarchy of habits, which was supposed to be a step-by-step self-help book about how I replaced bad habits with good ones. But initially from the start, you, you use not so great habits to get rid of the really bad ones. So, you know, for the alcohol and the cocaine, the marijuana and the hard drugs, I had used video games and anime as like my, my free time um, spender. Also, I had nicotine still through that. So, and then I worked work jobs. It's honestly just like trying to keep your mind occupied with whatever that is. So, if you're trying to quit something like like tobacco, for me, I just needed I just needed a couple good days under my belt. So, uh, my thing is, I I play a lot of video games 
mostly mostly strategy video games. Um, I don't do first person shooters or sports sports games. It's definitely like turn based strategy, kind of like glorified chess. Um, an unhealthy amount, possibly, but it also allows me to start getting the good habits under wrap. Like if I had the urge to smoke, I would, you know, play video games or watch watch anime, right? But as long as I kept getting a couple good days of not smoking under my belt, my energy and my mental well-being started to return to me. So I was like, oh, I can go to the gym. Um, you know, I can meal prep. And you start to notice, you know, you start stacking up these little victories in order to start accumulating <laughs> a couple good days, a couple good weeks. And then, you know, here we are 50 days later. And it's a... Uh, it's been a good month or almost two months now, I'd like to say. So for, you know, if you're trying to get rid of a bad habit like smoking, definitely with the oral, oral fixation, uh, maybe you're trying to cut down on screen time for your phone, uh, you're trying to cut down on sweets. There's, I think just sitting with yourself and trying to find what you really want to do when you're spending your time, like your free time. Not everybody needs a side hustle. You don't always need to be focused on making money or some grandiose scheme or whatever. If you're honestly trying to focus on your health, just come up with like a plan, like a few good things that you can do in order to combat as my buddy, my buddies would say the lower self, you know, having a conversation with the dichotomy within yourself. It's like, yeah, we can do these impulsive, pleasurable things that we are addicted to, or we can start to do the more, uh, the healthier options, which it's going to suck at first. But like I said, don't, don't cut out all the fun, find some hobbies maybe some some television, find some things to occupy your time with in order to get rid of the ones you really want to get rid of first and then focus on those other habits later. But if there's one bad habit that's nagging you, you should be relentless in trying to figure out how to get rid of it. So that would be my <laughs> advice on that. Uh, you know, I still play a lot of video games at this point, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, I'm actually getting close to being back in the best shape of my life, so that's a good thing. Even with all the, the video games I've been playing, seldom writing, seldom working on the podcast, like a lot of really bad things came from my bad habits that accrued over these 14 months, but the amount of work that I put in the last 50 days without smoking um, have really started to blossom, I'd like to say. Um, in terms of definitely my physical wellness, uh, what I'm, what I've been eating the last like two to three weeks and how often I've been staying active and working out and even just going on walks, listening to music, um, reading a little bit too, like a lot of healthier options have been coming around more often because I've been very persistent with giving them a shot, even if from the start, you know, it doesn't seem so enticing, but you got to also understand like the really healthy things that you could be doing aren't going to really hit that dopamine threshold that the really nasty addictions and pleasurable things that you have are. So you have to keep that in mind. It's like, you know, you could order some really shitty takeout food or you can eat a healthier option. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to feel that, that food gasm from eating really healthy food. Maybe some people do, you know, but usually we, we feel a lot better for convenience sake, eating things that taste better, but also that are prepared for us. So we don't have to work, you know, so try and try and understand that, you know, life's, life's not always going to be a dopamine roller coaster, you know, sometimes you get, I, I had to take a step back and realize that, you know, but the, the addict in me is definitely an adrenaline junkie, as many of you know. And if you do know other addicts in your life, you could definitely sense that as well. Um, who doesn't love a good roller coaster, though? I'm saying. Um, so, 
talks a little bit about that. The other thing that I'd like to mention, um, just a quick recap on why I even started smoking in the first place. But we had lost our cat, Lou, in August, which was pretty much 12 months after we I had to put my, my childhood cat down, which was uh, one of the reasons why I started smoking in the first place last August. Um, for those of you that didn't know, I, we definitely went through the ringer with our last cat, Lou. Um, he had a lot of health problems, and we we did everything we could to to save his little life. And unfortunately, uh, you know, it just got too expensive. Sometimes you got to <laughs> take a step back and be like, "How selfish am I going to be? Am I going to keep putting money into him and keeping?" him alive just you know is that really a quality of life you know he's only one he's only one year old you know from the treatment from FIP or the actual FIP itself we don't know but it it did a number on his nervous system to the point where you know we're not you know we're not gods (laughs) we're just we're just humans so you know medical science has only progressed to a certain point we couldn't fix him completely you know, uh, but it definitely wrecked me. I'll tell you what, um, we put, we put everything we had into that cat. So it was really tough saying goodbye to him. Also it was the, you know, the first thing that Lisa and I, you know, loved together, took care of. So it was, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty fucked up. I'll tell you that it's, it's still fucked up to think about, you know, but I've learned that I don't always have to be so ashamed of how passionately I I love, you know. I, I even like to be ashamed of how passionately I hate because, you know, being angry and and filled with violence and, and fear towards the moment isn't always the best thing. But, you know, just like uh, the adrenaline junkie I am, everything's always extreme. So I'm trying not to look at the love that we had for this cat in a negative light, you know, trying to look back as, you know, it was a good time, you know, love the little fucker, still love the little fucker, love my last cat too, pretty much love all all the pets I've had, you know, and uh, we did get a new cat, her name is Moya, she's a little older, she's about two, we adopted her from uh, Humane Society, so she's definitely warmed up to Lisa and I uh, as a part of the family. So that's always exciting. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I think always gonna have some sort of pet to brighten your day when you come home. So that's definitely been helping, helping as well. Um, I think I actually did a couple notes down here. Let's see. I got a post-it note right here. I wrote down some things I was supposed to talk about on this little solo episode. Pardon me. I'm drinking coffee like in my uh, my little logo. Yeah, my little logo. So it's crazy. I actually talked about Lou smoking, the bad habits that came from that, video game playing, not writing. That was really tough because of the smoking and the bad habits that had transpired. And it was tough for me to write during those pits of despair because I have – written so much about that sadness and that type of come up that um, it's almost become boring to me to to be writing about that for for the reason like I started writing like when I was like 13 13 years old started writing and you know during high school and college addiction you know very uh dealing with depression, insomnia, and other other things of that nature. I'd always generally been writing about um, depressing themes and ideas. So with this sobriety, I, you know, I was reaching this point where I was writing extremely positive things. Um, the entire book, Parables, obviously wasn't 100% positive, but it, it was definitely – one of the more positive things I'd I'd put together. So I was coming around to finally being able to 
talk about this positivity and articulate it, these triumphs that I've been going through. So dealing with the smoking and the other bad habits, uh, I just didn't really want to write about how sad I was in the moment, though. So now that I'm out of it, which has been the um, the inspiration I've had for the, the next book that I've been working on the last couple of months. So now I have the now I have the ammo to write that. You know, the dust has settled a little bit. You know, in the pits of some of our emotions, sometimes the passion's too much to handle. So um, I didn't want to like force myself to write. If you know, you never want to like force yourself to do anything. Really, hobby wise, creative wise, um, health wise, like you have to generally like intently want to do something. Can't can't be forcing yourself to do it. It's it's not going to work like that, and that's not how you should go live in life. I mean, like you shouldn't even have to like force yourself to go to work, but at a certain point, you need to you know pay the bills, survive, you know, <laughs> get food, shelter, all these other. Um, you know, hierarchy of needs and shit like that. So sometimes you do have to force yourself to do some shit you don't want to do. Um, in terms of your hobbies and your wellness and other things, you know, I think my buddy Brandon said mission statement a few times when he was in, in town. And that mission statement is something that can definitely resonate with me. I need to go back and do that. But also kind of change the mission statement for every facet of my life not just the the podcast not just the books but a mission statement for almost every parameter you know you know why do you want to be in better shape physically why do you want to have a better grasp of your mental health why do you want to understand your emotions why do you want to become more financially independent or financially educated like what is your your mission statement on each of those should also it should be a vague understand what is the mission statement for the whole damn thing together you know and it's i think it's just to live a healthy happy life and i will say you don't need to chase happiness. I understand a lot when um, people say don't chase happiness, and I, I do agree with them, but I guess when I say a ha happy, healthy life, it's, 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 I guess grateful would be a better word to describe the, the perfect combination of healthy and happy. So that mission statement, that purpose is to live a, live a grateful, live a grateful life kind of simplify it there you know shit <sighs> um damn i just realized i had the fucking lights turned on here and i have this stupid fucking light on so this probably doesn't even look that good i mean hopefully it's still in 4k but this light's supposed to be off you know i'm just gonna change that so fucking sit tight all right just hold that okay wait let me do this really quick <sighs> ah, sheesh. You know? I guess that's a little better. Is that a little better? I don't know. I'm going to ask my video guy if that's a little better. It's probably it's probably better. So, um, shit. I feel like I was supposed to talk about some other shit. Um... One more thing I'd like to mention is my friends about the smoking thing. My friends had said I was smoking on our, our camping trip back in September. Um, I was smoking cigars back then and, you know, I was kind of down about it, but you can definitely read it on my face when I'm doing something that I'm ashamed of. I just wear it all over my face. And, uh, they said, seeing me smoke or let loose like this is uh it it they're they're glad to see it almost because <laughs> it makes them feel better about their mistakes and i'm like i don't like yeah i guess like i guess i'm thinking more individualistically though like 
you know, I wish more people would call me out on my bullshit because we, we get really good at not calling ourselves out on our bullshit, you know? So I understand where they're coming from though, too. And I've had other people kind of say that in a different way before. So yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad I'm out of it though. And I'm, I'm sorry. I can't make the people around me feel better about their mistakes. You know, if, uh, you know, if you need to reach out to me about something like that, that's different too. Uh, my thing is, I think I had someone close to me reach out to me talking about sobriety and, uh, I just wanted to give them a little guidance and they confided in me with a, a few things about alcohol and they're slowly getting closer to giving it up completely, which is fantastic. You know, I'm, you know, I'm pretty biased about the, the sober lifestyle for people that know they have a problem. And I know a lot of people who don't have an issue drinking, who can have a couple drinks, even like two drinks a month and be totally fine, <laughs> which has not, it's never made any sense to me, but I can never see myself doing something like that. Um, but for the people who do know that they have a problem, uh, it's it's nice to hear from them confide in me because shit, I feel like I got like a little bit of knowledge about why it's good to get rid of things like that. You know, your bad habits, vices, alcohol, especially. So yeah, it was nice having that interaction with somebody. Uh, yeah, it kind of made, made me feel good. You know, I don't really want to be a life coach, but if people really want to ask me about some shit like that, you know, DM me, I guess, hit me up if you know me you have my phone number so don't hesitate to call or text if you don't uh hit up my dm um i'm not charging anybody right now but if you take up too much of my fucking time i might i might probably will though so that's that's funny um yeah i got too much fucking going on you know i keep making these lists of all these things i gotta do i gotta want to learn, want to keep learning guitar, want to keep learning Japanese, want to write more books, want to make the podcast better, um, want to buy a house, want to save more money, want to invest more, you know, want to get in the best shape of my life, want to consistently um, train so I can dunk a basketball better, want to do this, want to do that, yeah, so fucking the list just keeps getting longer and more ridiculous all the fucking time and it's actually overwhelming so trying to cut down on a couple of things um i wonder if this uh i wonder if anyone's still listening at this point you know if you're still listening uh i appreciate it uh if you're not yeah fucking right dude so uh yeah Really appreciate everyone sticking around for this little bonus episode. Um, I think we're putting this on YouTube. So if you like the content, um, I can plan this a little better. So what I was going to be doing is I was going to have actual episodes every other week with a guest that's planned out, uh, some good shit like that. And then on the other weeks alternating i was going to do a little bit of a like a vlog episode or something like this um i don't know what you think about that um i might just do it anyway and yeah i might just do it anyway you know it'll be a lot more planned out in the future though I have some things to talk about actual outline stuff like that if you do have some ideas or some topics that you would like me to talk about or some questions that uh, you would like me to try and answer, honestly, like shoot a DM, shit like that. So, yep. Um, appreciate everything. Y'all have a good rest of your day and uh, stay up. Feel free. <laughs>